Hello and welcome to the Excel Olympics YouTube channel. My name is Gaspar Kamasek. I'm an Excel MVP from Slovenia, the only country in the world that has the word love in the name. And today I want to talk about two functions. So the functions are network day and work day. And then we're going to talk about two functions that are derived from them, which are their international versions, or at least that's the way I call them. It's workday.intel and networkdays.intel. Now these make these functions so versatile and so useful. I think everyone that uses Excel should know these. Um, but let's go slowly through the process. So let's just talk about the workday and the network days function and explain what they are. So basically these are functions, they're very related because they more or less do the, the same thing or at least go in the same circle. Um, these are functions that talk about kind of project uh, management, right? You have your start date and then you have the number of working days. And what you're thinking about is when is the end date coming, right? So you got a task, you know how long it takes, you know when it's going to start and you're wondering when it's going to end or the other way around. You know, you got a task, you know, you got to finish it by then. So how many days is that? How many days do I have? And then I can you know, assign my resources accordingly. Um, so first let's look at the workday function. So the workday function works with two pieces of data and that is the starting date and the working days. So if this is my starting date and I know it's gonna take 360 working days, when is this task gonna end? And let's look at the workday function and the network day function is very, very similar, um, at least in the sense of the arguments it takes. So the workday function, It's going to ask you for a start date. That's this one. And then it's going to ask you for number of days. Now you can see it also has a parameter called holidays, but that can be omitted and we're going to omit it in this case. So I'm just going to do this. And all that this does at this point is it says, well, if you start on the 13th of April, 2015, and you're working for 360 days, you're going to finish on the 29th of August on the 2016. Now, what it did, it, it already took into account all the weekends. So it's not counting the weekends, right? These are work days. But then you can also say, well, okay, those are the weekends, but I also know I will not be working on holidays, right? So let's see how that would pan out. So I'm just going to take the same function. That was control and apostrophe. And I say workday, take the same date, take the same number of days, but then also add the holidays. And that's what this table is for. So these are all the holidays within that range. And now it's going to finish on the 14th of September, 2016, right? Because it's also taking into account all the holidays that I will not be able to work, right? And now, so the, this is the workday function. Let's look at the network days function because it's very similar, but it's taking the start date and end date and what it returns is the number of working days in between. So if I go here and I go, give me network days. Now the start date is this and the end date is this. Again, it's got the same, do you want the holidays and for, this first example, I'll say no. So it's going to take 373 working days from here to here. That's only counting the weekends, but now let's also count the holidays. So we take the same thing again, but then we go here are the holidays. And now it's going to take 361 or not. It's going to take it's only going to be 361 working days between those two dates, right? That's what it's telling me. Okay. So up to here, well, all good, right? So we have these two functions. They seem to be useful in, in project management and, you know, tasks and that it is, it is useful, but it's not extremely useful, right? Because you can so quickly get into, situation where you say, well, what if I'm only working Mondays 
Wednesdays and Fridays. Right? What if not only the weekends, but I'm also taking Tuesday and uh, Thursdays off? How do I tell it? I will basically you can't. You could add those days to the holidays table, but that would just be confusing. Right? So how would I go about doing that? And then and then you also go, what is a weekend? Right? For some countries that could be Saturday, Sunday. For some countries, it could be Sunday and Monday. So how do I take that into account, right? Because weekends, the way I think about them, it's Saturday, Sunday, right? But somebody else might be thinking the other way. So how do I tell it that Sunday and Monday are my weekends? And that is important to tell it because then it knows that if a holiday happens on a Saturday, that's also a free day, right? So that's why the international versions of the functions are right here. So what this one does, is you say I'm going to take the international version of work day. This is the start date. This is the number of days. I'm still going to tell it. See over here, we still have the holidays and I'm still going to give it the same thing. But then it also has this parameter where it says, well, what is your weekend? Right. And what you give it here is something like this. So you're defining not only weekends, although it says weekend, you can do this, you can, and you have to put it in as a string. And now you can see that over here, it says, well, you can define what days constitute as weekends, right? What are those that I should omit by default? And I could go with either one of these, but I'll take it a step further because I'll take it to exactly the, the level I told you before where I want Monday, Wednesday and Friday, only those days to be the working day. So my weekend in effect would be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday, right? And there's no option like that over here, but I could go in here and say something like this. Monday, I'll be working. Tuesday, no. Wednesday, yes. Thursday, no. Friday, yes. Saturday, Sunday, no. And then I just finish that off as a string. So that needs to be a string, right? And it's basically seven true, true and falses, right? One or a zero. One if it's a working day and zero if it's not. And taking this into account, what do I get? Well, if I'll only be working those three days, the work is going to last till the 10th of January, 2017. Right. And it's basically the same thing with the network day. So it's also got this international version. Here's the start date. Here's the end date. What are my weekends? Well, I'm going to go for the same thing again. There it is as a string. And what are my holidays? Well, they're right over here. And there it is. So if I take that into account, I'll only be working 295 days. So this is kind of the brilliance of these because uh, Excel oftentimes it has this, you know, a functions that are just derived from something like if you have a range of numbers, you can do max and you'll get the, the highest one. But if you want the third highest one, you sort of need an extra function and that is large, right? Um, or if you have, if you want to round numbers, that's round, that's round down and round up. Those are your functions, right? But what those do, they're, they're only thinking decimal. Right? The decimal system is what they're thinking in, in terms of. But what if I wanted to sort of round up to the closest, uh, factor of five, let's say, right? So how would I do that? Well, now you need the M round function, the module around, or the ceiling or the floor function. Now you need those three to say, well, round or round up or round down to the closest multiplication of number five, right? So oftentimes in Excel, when you, when you got a function, but it's sort of lacking something, you should always think, oh, what's the 
the derivative of this? What's the, the next function that does everything that this one does, but then it gives me extra options? And that is exactly how you should think about this international versions of network days and workday, right? So they make those original functions a lot more versatile and they give you a lot more options how to use them. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.